Command Point now has merch. Link in the description. Uh, okay, so... Let's talk about the elephant in the room, Shane. Um, so you took uh, Chaos Cult uh, down to the Atlantic City Open, and uh, so I guess I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask you why why did you want to take this particular team to this event? Well, I really wanted to take a team that is notoriously underpowered and try to make them uh, shine a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, that's not why. Um, uh, no, there, uh, so I mean, chaos cults, I think people are starting to realize at this point, if they don't already, uh, they're, they're pretty broken. Uh, they're, they're extremely broken. Um, I was, uh, I, I typically don't take the most strong thing. Uh, I don't think I've ever gone to a tournament and taken something that we had on our own S tier tier list at the time. Um, but, uh, I, usually I like to come up with the answers. Like I'll find a team that I find to be strong that I enjoy. And I try to come up with different answers to different things in the meta. And, uh, this is the first time I felt like I couldn't come up with anything. Like I didn't have a real answer to, um, to, a to like a problem team. And I was thinking about taking legionaries. I thought about taking a few teams actually but um chaos cults is just uh they're kind of beyond um in my opinion yeah so uh i i wanted to take them i didn't have as much practice on them uh coming into the event but it didn't really matter to me um i just felt like you know i the practice i did have i i felt was pretty um important i guess and yeah. i felt prepared enough to uh t- to try and win with them yeah so how many prep games uh with the team did you actually get in because this is a uh, rel- this is a very new team so i imagine not that many players had a lot of prep with them yeah i probably played like five games but i played a few games against them too quite a few mm-hmm. um so all in all i probably played like 10 games like as or against them and i think i played as them five times before ACO. Mm-hmm. um and uh for what it's worth the games i was playing as them i was actively trying to only play um at least near the end i was trying to actively play in situations that i thought were unfavorable like i pretty much refused to play practice games on into the dark or on the capture mission with them because they're already so so strong in those situations. So I was practicing mostly on like really open boards, like Octarius open, uh, looter secure pretty much every time. Um, ideally I'd pick a board with like a bad deployment zone with like a lot of like open space that my opponent could exploit just to see like, just to like stress test the team and, and try to force myself to get better at, uh, getting out of tough spots with them. Right. Um, because I think they're so good at the things they're good at that it, to me, it didn't even seem like that worth practicing, honestly. And I, I don't think that's a me thing. I think that's just a chaos cult thing. Yeah. So um, for those of, I guess for our listeners who don't, don't know anything about chaos cult, uh, what is it, I guess, what is the team breakdown? What does the team look like? And what makes the team so violently overpowered uh, in this current kill team meta? Well, I think it's like a, it's a cascade of things. Well, first of all, the team just is, and I didn't really see it on paper when I first looked at the rules, but it wasn't until I like saw them on the board um, and played against them that it like clicked for me that like, whoa, this team is a lot. Um, but, um, like as far as the team itself, like they, 15 bodies is a lot like Geller Pox has 15 bodies and like half of them can't do anything. And that's like very much by design. And Geller Pox is a really strong team. Uh, this team, all 15 models are like capable of doing things like they can, they can all be very, very useful. They're not just good at one thing. Right. Like, uh, like with Geller Pox, like the glitchlings are basically good at one thing and the mutants are like okay at certain things but they have huge drawbacks and um that 
doesn't seem to be the case with chaos cults. Uh, so that's 10 cultists that are by their own rate, not bad models. They're seven wounds, five up save. Uh, they have a bad pistol and they have uh, a melee profile that is not too bad for what they need to be doing. Um, four attacks on fours, damage two, three is in a vacuum, not good, but four attacks lets you parry out and survive a lot of situations where you shouldn't survive. And uh, for those models, that's really important because you might be able to hit somebody and parry in a situation where otherwise you would die and then suddenly you mutate and the next turn you get a torment that you wouldn't have gotten. Um, the leader is actually super important. It's not like a typical plasma pistol power sword leader that kills things, but the utility of it is really good. Like, like telling models to dash. Um, telling models to do a three inch charge, uh, mutating models is the most important thing. But, um, a lot of my games, like my leader wouldn't move for like this first two turns usually. Cause he's just mutate, tell somebody to dash and stand where he is. Um, like it, effectively you can use that like dash order to like kind of get like an 11 inch charge effectively because you can tell a guy to dash up three inches and then he can charge from that position when you activate him later um so there's pretty crazy plays with that like you can really threaten on turn one um the mind witch has a lot of cool play like the minus one apl so like you select a model that's in line of sight and you just give it minus one apl and a lot of the time teams are going to set up in full engage against you because you don't really have shooting which means they're going to be in your line of sight and you can just like shut down like an alpha strike play that they're setting up. Or like you see, they only have one guy in range to move and pay to tap an objective. And then you just minus one APL them and now they can't tap the objective. Um, and then there's the Icon Arc, who's just like absolutely bonkers, broken. Like that model, everything about it is just so, so stupid. Um, it's so tanky. It can kill like anything almost in the game in one shot outside of like a custody or like a nightmare hulk um i hate it so much yeah it's just too good um the auras need to be actions or something i don't know they get it's got damage reduction minimum two on hits and crits like there's no damage reduction minimum two really in the game anymore except this and it doesn't eat it's like it's hits and crits and it's in a four inch bubble around him which is really big um so yeah, I don't know, but uh, and then obviously the torments and mutants are just <laughs> so hard to kill. So hard to kill. Yeah, and they can kill anything. They're they're really reliable. Like they very very rarely actually like whiff. Yeah. Um. So it's like you kill one, another one. It, like if you kill one, it's like a miracle, and then another one pops up, and like you can pay a CP to have it fight twice, and. Oh my gosh, that's the team is so good. Yeah, I think it's the best team that has ever been released in this game. I think they're better than Pathfinders on release. I think you're a hundred percent right. Um, yeah, like in the game, in the one prep game that I played against you when I was playing Intercession, like those torments were basically like one and two shotting every intercessor that they got in close combat with, and I'm, you know, I th I'm thinking I'm doing all the right things. I'm actually managing to kill like both of your torments on <laughs> on turn two yeah but then turn three just two more pop up or not even that uh, i don't even think they popped up it was just three three of your uh cultists like mutated into mutants yep. yeah um uh, and then if you don't kill anybody on this team outright the cultist player is just going to mutate them so they come back with full wounds as a new model. So it's like the only way I can I can think of getting ahead of this team and stopping it from snowballing because as the game goes on, every other team in this game is losing more and more resources whereas the Chaos Call team is just getting exponentially stronger. Is you got to kill like at least a third of the team turn 1. And with the way that like terrain is set up on like open boards now, because the you you've talked about this with me a little bit about how like um, 
the terrain is set up at tournaments now to adjust for things like Pathfinders, like those really strong shooting teams, uh, it makes it so that a, a, it's just a, a perfect storm for a team like Chaos Cult, which is a primarily melee-focused team, to just get up the board and in your face and uh, just be able to avoid getting shot off the table. <laughs> and I, I think that's the only way you beat them, is by shooting them off the table. Yeah, primarily in turn one. And the teams that can uh, typically run really deep into your back line and alpha strike, or not even your black back line, but like up the board and, and threaten models that are are moving up. Uh, those are typically teams that cast called out activate. So even though, in my opinion, the best way to cripple them is to kill a mutant on turn one, it's usually in the um, hands of the cult player to keep their models safe mm -hmm. more so than it's in the hands of the other player to like actually m be proactive and make that play. Like they have to hope that the chaos cult player is sloppy with the positioning of their mutants on turn one. And then they need to be ready and in a position to capitalize on that. And then it needs to work. They still need to kill the model and, Mutants are not easy to kill. They're no five up save, five up feel no pain, seven wounds is like basically like ten wounds. And if you if you uh, like, for me, when I was playing against teams that I thought could do that, like Void Dancers, I took the blessing to give my mutants a four up save, and then it's even harder to kill them. So it's like I I don't know what. I never lost a mutant on turn one. I don't believe the entire tournament. That mm -hmm. was like the one thing I was prioritizing not doing. Um, and I think if you can, uh, keep those mutants alive and get those two torments on turn two, I don't want to say the team plays itself. Like you, you, you can't be like a bad player and win a tournament, obviously, but like, it's very, very forgiving. Yeah. Um, and there was four other cult players at Atlantic city. I think there were five, but, uh, spoiler alert, uh, four of those, cult players wound up making top 10 at least top six actually. top six so yeah cult made up first place third place fourth place and sixth place which is just outrageous yeah um uh, yeah yeah the team is definitely a problem